Hello everyone, my name is Xiaobi. I'm the host for tonight's program. I hope everyone is fine and safe. Avoid going around, going out or roaming around. Always remember to wash your hands and avoid touching your face. And most importantly, stay at home. To all the Muslims, I wish you all Ramadan Mubarak and Salamat Hari Raya. These broadcasts are brought to you by our fellow JPO members and some of the world's greatest musicians that wishes to share their knowledge and help aspiring musicians through their musical journey. We are also providing opportunities for everyone with different interests to learn not performance, but transferable life skills. We are doing this series of program because JPO think this will be able to help in uplifting the spirit of everyone in this long period of lockdown. So if you have any questions to ask, please don't be shy and type them in the Q&A below. And for YouTube viewers, you can type them in the live chat. Today, GPO are indeed very honored to be able to invite Matteo Mazzotti as our special guest for tonight, with his topic being essential method of violin making. Matteo Mazzotti was born in 1979. As a child, he showed a precocious interest in music while attending the workshop in Piacenza of his grandfather, Oreste Mazzocchi. A well-known cabinet maker, he had the opportunity to learn how to work the wood. He attended the Istituto Lutario a Stradivari in Cremona when he was 15 for the complete study of five years where his teachers were master Massimo Negroni. Besides the violin class, he also took private lessons from Professor Umberto Panici in Piacenza and learned from Bruce Carlson, a teacher of the official masterclass for Lombardia in 1999, the style and secrets of ancient Italian violin masters. In year 2000, he got a degree as Maestro Lutaio with full mark. After that, he worked at Master Massimo Negroni's workshop, getting the opportunity to improve his knowledge of the Cremona classic stylistics, as well as the 100-year-old secrets of violin polishing. He finally opened his own workshop in Piacenza, where he lives. Matteo Mazzotti's instruments have been displayed at the most important international exhibitions of string instruments, such as Mondo Musica in Cremona, Music Mess in Frankfurt, International Fair, International Music Fair in Tokyo, and all main Chinese expositions, such as Music China Shanghai and Beijing Palm Expo. Matteo Mazzotti's instruments are valued and honored as original items of the classic Luthier's art of Cremona. The master repairs and restores string instruments in the musical conservatory G. Nicolini in Piacenza and teaches in several master class to give his skills and secrets to correctly preserve the instruments. So everyone, let us welcome Matteo Mazzotti. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome uh, in my workshop. Hear me? Can yes. you see me? Yes, yes, yes. It's a bit laggy, okay. but it's bearable. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, Maestro. Matteo, so could you tell us um, something about the video that we have watched just now? Well, uh, the video was made uh, like uh, two or three years ago, around two years ago. Um, and it's based uh, on uh, my idea to show my new workshop based uh, in my born city of Piacenza. And uh, it was made by um, a non-professional uh, video maker, but uh, he was uh, my close friend. So we tried to um, to make a sort of uh, uh, very quick and uh, easy uh, um, side see of what is my work. So my work is based on cellos. 
violas and cellos. So um, we try to uh, be in a short minute, in a short uh, video, try to show what my profession is. Yes. And uh, for the begin, yeah, in the beginning, I also try to uh, play <laughs> a little bit of violin. A very poor, <laughs> very <laughs> poor playing. I know, but uh, I know, but I'm a violin maker anyway. There's just a few violin makers that are uh, also um, uh, able to play the violin. So I just um, play when I was a uh, very young student and then uh, because of my profession I have to quit the study of violin playing so uh, as everybody knows if you don't play the violin uh, all goes yeah. down <laughs> so but anyway it's good for my profession yeah, yeah yeah it's good for my profession to test the violin and every instrument when uh, it's done to immediately understand if it's necessary something like a uh, uh, adjustments or uh, something wrong with the position, something wrong with the wolf tone or whatever, you know. So for me, it's very important that yes, even yes, yes. Um, play just a little bit, but where it's necessary. And uh, about the video, it's uh, it's just my profession, you know. And when I open this new workshop, I. I decide to make this new video because there, there's uh, quite many videos on YouTube about me and my profession. Okay, so I'd like to know, so what got you into violin making? Well, basically, uh, it was a sort of, um, uh, sort of uh, blind decision. Honestly, because in my family, just my grandfather was a, um, a wood cabinet maker. Uh, maker wood, uh, yeah, cabinet maker. He working with the wood, but uh, my direct direct parents were was not. So I decided to do this uh, this school in Cremona because uh, when I was uh, 14, 15 years old, uh, I really don't have. Uh, an idea for my future but uh, since I love the music since I love um, everything uh, around uh, everything uh, behind the music uh, so I um, uh, I was interested in this particular school because it, it was a, an international school it's the only one in Italy that is true international school so how uh, half of my classmates were foreign people and uh, half Italian. So I was very interested in it. So I, uh, my decision was, okay, let's try. I don't know what happened, but let's try. Maybe <laughs> there will be something interesting here. Wow. And uh, by the time, by the years, uh, my interest in violin making increased day by day and increasing... Uh, um, all the violin making word, uh, all the musician word, uh, it comes to me and it comes to them. So um, everything uh, perfectly fixing through the ears. And uh, when I was 20, I was degreed uh, as a violin maker. So everything wow. happens without, without any problem. Wow, that is amazing. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, Whoa. also because you have to, you have to know that um, here in Italy, uh, violin making word is kind of uh, um, very close to everybody because, uh, as you probably know, Cremona is the capital, the world capital of violin making. Violin making yeah. So for us. Yeah, for us Italian, see the violin maker, see the um, uh, the laboratory, every in, a, in every historical center is quite common. So uh, during the years, I I just have to uh, I just had uh, my well my dream is uh, do an authentic handmade job. Um, that's it. That's it. Wow. So would you like to share like how the violin is made? Well, 
The violin, uh, it's um, kind of a very antique instrument. Uh, it comes from uh, more than 500 years ago. And we, by the makers of Italian school, already do the violin um, with the same method of 500 years ago. Everything, uh, all it has been changed through the years is just the tools, but the method is ever the same. For example, at the age of Stradivari, also at the age of Amati, that it was more than 400 years ago, the top was made in Italian spruce, as now. So um, hundreds and hundred years passing, but the method is still the same. We use uh, the front of Italian spruce tree. And all the rest of the violin is made in Balkan metal. Balkan is a European area in East Europe where the, um, the maple the result and the best balance of strength and tone. That's why we use Balkan maple um, instead of um, Canadian or um, Asian maple, because the Balkan maple um, can be uh, good for sound and strong and uh, strength strength okay sorry for yes, my yes, yes. No, no. <laughs> it's okay and um uh, sorry and um violins the most important thing is obviously is the sound because the violin is an instrument instrument for the sound so the most important thing is to be focused to the sound but we as italian makers have the chance to have a very very long style school so we have to follow also a lot of um, kind of uh, fetish can i say this word uh, yeah. <laughs> fetish details as coroners as powerfling as air holes and uh, every measurements must be very 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 clear as uh, uh, not millimeters but um, parts of millimeters and so uh, it's kind of a intense job you have to be very relaxed very um, focused on your work so no stress. Uh, when it's, it's not the day, it's better to do another thing because the violin needs concentration, a lot of concentration, and uh, not just a concentration for um, good skills and good making, but concentration for the focus to the future of this instrument because it will have to play. And of course, when you are uh, like after 10 or 15 years of profession, I mean profession, not the school, after the school, 10, 15 years of profession, uh, you, tr you starting to understand where is the kind of secret. So the secret is, it's not one, it's many, all combined to give a, the violin what the customer wants. Because uh, as now, many violinists asking you, for example, I want to be uh, a solist, so I want a deep tone on G string, uh, instead of uh, I want to be uh, like an orchestral or chamber musician, so I need a, um, a clear, a smooth overtones and everything uh, like this. So you have to know how to do this. That's, that's why you need to be very relaxed because it's, it's just a one millimeter can change most of those things. I don't say that I don't do mistakes. Everybody doing mistakes and me too. But after the year, through the years, you can, um, you can prevent your mistakes just because of your passion and your um, concentration and your soul. The most important in the violin, as I see the violin making, is the soul, because my instruments have to replace my soul. I have a strong soul, so uh, in my violins I prefer to give my uh, character on them. So um, I'm pretty famous, uh, so <laughs> like this, for this, the strength of my sound, 
because uh, I understood how to give the strength um, on my instruments. And so that's why I see the, the violin uh, construction. Wow, so other, other than, um, so do you mainly just um, make violins or do you also make violas and cellos as much as the yeah, violin or I just do, focus on violin? No, I just, uh, yeah, I just do the classical quartet. So it's a violin, viola and cello. Honestly, uh, I prefer uh, make violins, but all the people say to me, your cello are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but, but all the time that I have to make a cello, it's like, a, oh my God, oh my God, okay, <laughs> I have to do a cello, oh my God, okay. why you don't play the violin, why you don't play the violin, it's much easier, <laughs> come on, and, uh, <laughs> that's just a joke, but you know, a cello is a, it's a big instrument, very hard to make, because it's, it's kind of a 300 or 400 hours of work, even 500 wow. hours, yeah, all by hands, and uh, especially the big models, it's like uh, more than 400 hours, so it's kind of very long job, but when it's finished, it's something unbelievable, really, it's something that satisfied your soul more than uh, to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Really? So do you do you have do you have uh like are you working on a cello right now? Do you have one? Like how uh, I just I just ha I just sent one 10 days ago in Australia, the latest one. <laughs> wow. Because yeah, I, it's I, it's I, already I played there. a cello. <laughs> oh really? You played the yes, cello? Yes, I played the oh, cello. So you have to book, you have to book. <laughs> but you have to wait a pretty long time. <laughs> wow. The, so, the, the latest one was, uh, was just sent in Australia just uh, 10 days ago. It, it uh, arrived uh, um, this Tuesday, so just yesterday. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. And uh, luckily, luckily, all safe. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because you know, but because of pandemic, I uh, I've been used to travel all around the world to bring by myself the instruments all around the world, especially in Asia, in China, in Taiwan, in Japan. Uh, I even been in Australia, but like uh, for four years ago. But uh, anyway, I used to travel all the world with my instruments because I prefer to bring the instruments by myself uh, instead of shipping because shipping is ever uh, very complicated. But uh, unfortunately, yes, yes. due to the pandemic, there's no way to travel, yes. uh, to make uh, international travels. So I have to send it. Luckily, it was arrived all safe. Thanks, God. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the most worried part is that in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> correct, correct. Uh, okay, so so which wood is most commonly used in violin making, or if you are uh, sorry, can you repeat which the which wood wood? Yeah, the wood uh, I explained uh, before. Uh, I um, the maple uh, the yeah the Balkan maple and Italian spruce. But you can even use uh, other, um, uh, well, the front is the, the front of the string instruments is the part that really sounds. So it's very important that must be in aged Italian spruce. But the rest of the instruments, it can also be in other essence, like, um, I used mainly maple, but uh, opium or um, even, uh, I don't know how to translate in English, but there's three, four different kinds of, especially the, even I used the Italian maple that right now is very rare because the, uh, the um, uh, how to say agriculture, okay, agriculture cut it off all the, oh. Um, the um, original yes. trees in my area so it's very very rare there's just a few but uh, you have to wait too many times to grow up them 
so yeah. it remains just a few and that's a problem but uh, e even um, someone use uh, also the opium and um, opium is not the, 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 the drug it's a it's a tree called opium and uh, even um, <laughs> yeah, yeah no drugs <laughs> and uh, uh, the, I don't know how to translate. I'm so sorry because uh, betulla, but it's Italian, uh, Italian spoken betulla, and uh, also uh, someone said uh, rough maple. It's kind of, I have a violin around here in rough maple that is come from um, far east. And it's very nice to see, but the sound result kind of uh, um, too much smooth, in my opinion. So the main word is spruce and balta maple. Oh, so um, do you do you use different wood? Like, um, how do I say? Uh, for maybe a violin, maybe the back uses a different wood and the front uses a different wood, or, or, or all the wood are used the same? Uh, well, usually all the wood, it's, it's not the same because uh, every piece of wood is different from each other because the tree are every different. So the most important thing is ever, for example, they can bring this spruce, and uh, you have to understand how it's gonna sound it. And uh, use like this and understand the density of the wood to arrange the thickness, the future thickness in the instruments. So I can understand that this word sounds a bit low. It's a low tone. So in this case, even when I scrub it, when I scrub it, it's, it's kind of deep note. So I know that when I will do this kind of, this, when I will use this spruce, I have to work especially on thickness to uh, arrive to the goal where I want to be. For example, if I want a, a brilliant instrument, I have to do more thickness in this wood because uh, otherwise it will be too much soft. So I have to uh, give it more elastic elasticity. So it's kind of every skill is focused on the piece of, wow. the, um, of the wood. So uh, the um, experience is very important. Yeah, definitely. So <laughs> I'd like to know. So normally, how many wood makes a violin? How many different kinds of wood make a violin? Uh, it's um, just two. Oh, two. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, correct. It's three. It's three because the fingerboard is in the ebony maple. But the the um, I used two kinds of wood: spruce and maple, and the ebony for the fingerboard. But someone. In Italian school, use uh, even willow, the willow tree for the internal parts. But I prefer to use prunes for the internal parts. So most of the violins are made just by two or three woods. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm very curious. <laughs> okay, we'll move on first. <laughs> so, how can you find a specific sound? Yeah, that's the most. That's the most difficult. That's the. It's um, as I explained before. Uh, first, you have to check carefully the wood you have. Second, uh, there's a lot of um, how to say. There's a lot of um, tricks that helps you. For example, the thickness of the belly, the bass bar the um, model, also the model of violins ever changing. And uh, you, can, uh, you can do different models as a Stradivari, Guarneri, Amati, and the modern uh, maker from 19th century as Poggi, as um, Garimberti. There's a, a lot of models that helps you uh, because uh, every model is changing the the edges and measurements and uh, a lot of uh, different things. 
and uh, all is based by experience. So is there like a more superior model for the violin? In my opinion, there's no superior model, but everyone, I'm sure that every one violin maker, I'm pretty sure that have his model. For example, my personal favorite model is the Guarneri del Gesù. But I'm sure that every single maker can do his best with just one model. Wow, okay, okay. So what about the varnish? Well, the varnish is another work. <laughs> it's a oh. very, yeah, it's, well, it's a very big word. For example, uh, there's a, mainly there's two kinds of varnish. It's spirit varnish and the oil varnish. That's the main difference between two varnish. Uh, the oil varnish was the original antique varnish that were used also 100 years ago, because in the past there was no um, spirit varnish because it was too difficult to find alcohol because the alcohol was not so common for, um, for work. Uh, it was, there, it was um, difficult to match, to find. So, and there was a professional painter, as uh, you know, the, the most important painter in the world, they use oil varnish. So the violin makers in the past just use, used oil. But in the 19th centuries, we developed a spirit varnish. Spirit varnish is um, mainly based uh, on uh, natural resins as a seed luck, as a, um, I don't know the English name, but uh, I say in Italian, elemi and um, propoli. And uh, it's oil, uh, it's all, um, tree raising from the trees so the most difficult thing is uh, do your own receipt uh, receipt for mix them in the best way to preserve the instruments to give him a beautiful looking and to give him a beautiful sound those three things are must match the best as you can so, uh, for example, if protect the varnish, but it's too uh, it's too hard, the wood won't uh, want to uh, vibrate correctly. Yeah. Uh, correct, won't vibrate correct. Otherwise, if it's too mellow, uh, the wood vibrates, but uh, it doesn't protect the wood. If it's uh, too dark, uh, you maybe it's protecting. It. And the sound, but uh, the looking is very bad because you don't see the wood. So it's uh, unnecessary to use a uh, flame, the wood or a beautiful wood because you cover it. So it's very difficult to match those three things all together. Uh, I prefer spirit varnish because my, um, my school, in my school, I learned spirit varnish, but I did uh, from 2015 uh, uh, until 2020, even the uh, oil varnish. But at the moment, uh, honestly, I say that I quit it. I just uh, came back to my, uh, to my route. <laughs> wow, wow. So do you like, so there's uh, oil and spirit varnish, right? Yeah, the main. Yeah. So, have any like um, can can they be mixed together? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> um, usually, it, it's impossible. It's impossible because oil and spirit are non-compatible. Uh, if you put, it's like a mix uh, oil with water. Um, they never mix them each other. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. in the in the moment. The, it, it seems like it's mixed, yes, yes. but, but after, it doesn't. after yeah. this, <laughs> <Okay>. they divided. <laughs> okay. yeah, oil and spirit, they cannot mix. But there is one spirit varnish that 
it can be um, mixed with oil. It's the fat essence varnish. So you make a spirit varnish with a part of oil varnish, just a part. Yeah, uh, it's like, um, uh, I don't know how to say when uh, turn uh, very fast a uh, centrifugation, something like that. Mm. Okay. Centrifugation to divide uh, the elements. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay, and very then, fast then, to divide the Then oh. you take just one part, and this part is compatible with spirit varnish. And it gives to the spirit varnish also the beautifulness of uh, the mellow, oil. of the honey, of uh, the oil varnish. I, that's my varnish. In, in, in fact, it's not a, a spirit varnish. I call mixed varnish. Oh, so so it's like something like, and then it separates and then take yeah. that. Yeah, ah, separating okay. uh, the uh, the elements and the just one element is compatible with spirit. The fat essence is called the fat essence. Wow! Wow! Okay. It's very flavored, like a um, um, uh, natural essence. It's very flavored. When you cook, uh, I make a varnish by myself. Uh, so when you cook it, uh, it's like a spring time. Wow. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, everything so... in violin making is made by yourself. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> so is there yeah. a difference in sound between using the oil and yeah. the spirit varnish? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Definitely, especially because uh, um, most of the time oil varnish sounds better because oil is much more mellow, it's much more um, smooth and uh, especially it's like honey, you know, uh, honey, uh, it, it presents like honey. So when you dry it, it's very, very, uh, it follow all the wood and all the, the vibes of the wood because it's very very mellow the spirit varnish is a kind of um, much more hard but if you mix them in the, the correct way you can find a good solution but uh, i don't say that spirit varnish sound, sounds bad i just said probably oil varnish is quite better even because it was invented so many 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 years ago so it's much more tested. For example, Stradivari used the oil varnish. <laughs> wow. What about the volume, the carrying power? Do they... Do the they carrying power? The volume? Yeah. Is yeah, there a the difference? Volume, the volume. Yeah, yeah. There's a difference, but it much more for... Um, depends much more for the model, for the, oh, okay. for the body, more okay. than a varnish. Oh, is uh, the volume of the violin depends much more from uh, the um, the body. Okay, okay. So, so um, I guess the spirit varnish will dry faster, right? Yeah, dry faster, definitely, definitely. If you wow. don't, uh, well, uh, nowadays uh, we use the, for oil varnish. We use the UVC lamp. Otherwise, oh. uh, for uh, yeah. oil, yeah, UVC. Otherwise, uh, um, for dry oil varnish, it's necessary like two months or even three months. Yeah. So how yeah. how fast does the UVC light help? Uh, two days. <laughs> wow! <Whoa. laughs> yeah, that's so fast. Yeah, but but you can you can't look the the lamp otherwise you you yeah. you're gonna be blind you're gonna be blind in like 10 seconds it's very it it is a um uh, a case a closed case uh, closed case because uh, it's very dangerous it's yes. kind of dangerous but uh, with uvc lamp in two days the violin is pretty dry uh, spirit varnish takes uh, all depends from your receipt, but the spirit varnish takes from uh, seven day to two weeks, okay. one or two weeks to be completely dry. Okay, so what is your style? My style? Oh, my style is 
the strength <laughs> in, in just one in just in one volume? word yeah it's the volume and the, it's the roughness mm. i love uh, yeah because it uh, it's a kind of mirror of my soul i'm i'm very um i'm a man with a strong soul so the um, what i really love it's making it's making a lot of instruments but of course through the years uh, the um, the skills became much more precise yes, but yes. my uh, preferences still is the sound because I focus this is an instrument the instruments is needed for the sound so I leave um, I leave uh, like a perfection to someone other like, sorry like how, what, what I mean the, uh, it, it means the um, most of my colleagues not most some of my colleagues just working for the perfection of the model, for the edges, that everything must be perfect. perfect. But most of them, they leave their violins in a case or in a window just for exposing. Because everybody said, wow, it's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect, but it doesn't sound. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the matter? What's the matter? My my profession is making the sound, making the music, give yes, the yes, voice, yes. give the voice to the musician. So my my outlook is like this. Wow! So how do you project the roughness into a violin sound? Uh, it's quite difficult because it, it's not so difficult at the moment because I made like a more than 200 instruments in my career. So it became much more easy <laughs> because of the experience, of course. But um, honestly, uh, it's all based by the, it's most of, um, there's many, uh, many things that have to be combined all together. For example, the wood, the model, the arching, the edges, the base bar, the bridge, the angle, the um, tension, the everything must be must match together. So after this, you can have a strong violin for a soulless player. That is my favorite kind of. That's hey, my hey. cup of tea, as English <laughs> people say. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so um, what do you think? of JPO and the activities that are when that we are doing now. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I was surprised also by professional. Uh, very, um, I, I was really surprised because I have to be honest, I didn't know you before, but I've been uh, surfing to know much more uh, when um, uh, Ling Yang Yes. Ling, yep, Ling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, contacted okay, me. No problem. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, when he contacted me, I was very, very, very uh, uh, curious. Curious about uh, why he contacted me for uh, an interview. It sounds uh, kind of strange, you know. But after this, I traveling. Uh, I surf. Surfing on uh, all your project, and I guess oh. pandemic, it's much more uh, difficult to meet the people that uh, meet each other, and so this is a, a very good opportunity. I thank you. I thank you. And, uh, <laughs> thank you very well, much. Too. I will speak very. <laughs> yeah, we'll speak very good for you guys. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing, oh. really. Thank you for your kind words. Wow. Uh, no, it's uh, deserved. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we will move on to the Q&A session. So this is where questions will be coming in from uh, okay. YouTube's live chat and the Q&A. Okay, so for the first, for the first question, Xiao Maestro. 
I am curious to know if the violin has ever been made in using other kinds of wood rather than spruce and maple, and has people explored into other possibilities over the years? Yeah, yeah, most of uh, many, many, many times, uh, most, uh, uh, not most, uh, many people try to use other woods, other essence in the violins and the every instruments, but the result most of the times was not so happy. So that's why we continue to use the same wood as 500 years ago. But uh, it, it doesn't mean that it's uh, wrong to try because the, the future, uh, nobody knows what about the future. So we must try. But wow. until now, the result was not so happy. Not so happy. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So among all the models, which is your favorite? My favorite model is Guarneri del Gesù model based on the cannone of uh, Paganini. Because uh, I, I even had the opportunity to make uh, uh, the copy of this violin because it's um, uh, exposed in a, very close to my hometown. It's just one hour by car. So you have the opportunity to see the original one many, many times. And uh, I make this copy one every year from 10 years. Wow. So yeah. is it, does it sound really different or? Like... Well, of course. Wow. <laughs> I cannot say that uh, I, I can be as Guarneri de Gesù, but it's a top sounding violin. All the time, wow. the customer say to me, wow, Matteo, that's a really good violin. Wow. Did you, did you manage to actually hold the original one? Yeah, of course. Two times. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, two okay. times. One Have time, you... uh, we, uh, we even... No, never, never played. Never oh, played. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. But I played on uh, Amati. I played uh, on uh, Stradivari. I played uh, on uh, Guarneri, but uh, Andrea Guarneri. And uh, because uh, those violins I have in my uh, showroom. Oh, and okay. I, I also had uh, Andre, uh, um, Antonio, yeah, Antonio from um, two years ago in a Shanghai exposition. It wow. was exposed in my booth. Wow. And so wow. I played, but just three notes. <laughs> wow. So I'm uh, not a violinist. The, the, the Paganini, the violin. So how did you feel when you hold it? Wow, it's amazing. It's amazing because you feel the history. You feel the... And when you think that it was held by Paganini, oh my God, uh, starting to be a trouble, you know? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. So moving on to the next question. So, hi, how long will it take for the wood to be properly seasoned and does it depend also on where the wood is coming from yeah well uh, the um, uh, the correct season for the wood starting from 15 years 15 years after 15 years it can be used otherwise the problem is the movement because the, if the wood is not um it's not correctly uh, aged. The, um, it can be moved after your work. It so like it can warp, be dangerous right? for cracks. Ah, in my, ah, okay, okay, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So 15 years is the less, uh, from 15 years to 100 years, it's okay. But 100 okay. years, find 100 years wood is very difficult. Very. Okay. This wood, this wood, for example, have uh, fourteen years. Wow! Oh, 14. Oh, 40. Oh, 40. 40. Whoa. 40. Oh. Four, four zero. He's got my age. 
I'm forty-two. Wow! Oh, that's very close. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, the next question now is coming from Andrew Basecleff. Signore yeah. Mazzotti, since you said that Bonjour. your profile is that you are masculine, and so do you aim or attempt to recreate a modern Stradivarius? Oh, <laughs> the, well, what uh, um, if I correctly understood he asked me if I can be a modern device so I don't know really I just okay to me because I love my job so whatever happened so we like to try like would you try or will you aim to a, to like to recreate a modern study virus? Uh, aim? Oh, I really don't know. Honestly, I do my my own uh, uh, work because it's like, uh, do you want to replace uh, Michelangelo? No. Yes, yes, yes. I understand. Michelangelo one in the world, one in history. Study is one in history. Do Stradivari is there. Yes, I'm yes, yes. Here. <laughs> oh yeah, creating your brand. <laughs> okay, so moving on to the next question. Hello, thank you for sharing the interesting insight into violin making. May I know what should I do if he or she is interested to learn how to make the violin? Any advice? It's not only practical skills, right? Yeah, first of all, uh, it's not just practical skills, first of all. But of course, it's very, very important. But uh, honestly, my suggestion, it uh, study, there's a lot of books, there's a lot of international books, even if you don't want to come in Italy, also because uh, right now it's quite impossible, yes. but uh, there's a lot of books that uh, um, explain how to make, why to do one thing instead of another thing. And um, first reading and then try to Okay, but okay. it all depends from your age. If you are like a 15 years old, uh, let's start. Don't think, don't think too much. Let's start. As uh, I won, when I was 15 years old, I just started. I didn't think uh, so much. I just uh, okay. That's my. Uh, that's a good opportunity. Let's try it, and uh, it goes well. Wow. Okay. Okay. So um, another question uh, is from Yap Kengui who asked about like which model is your favorite. And then this is also a question from him, Yap Kengvui. So what ground do you use for your violin varnish? Okay, the ground is a golden ground made by Propolis. Propolis is the, uh, uh, do you know the bees? They uh, resin to glue their house, oh, the bee please. houses, oh, okay. they speed on, yeah, properly, and they use also for the throat. When you have uh, some trouble for the throat, there's a spray with properly. The same resin I solve in alcohol, and it gives to the, uh, to the ground this beautiful uh, golden brown ground. I love it. I wow. love it. And it, it is also um, antibiotic. So it, it is good also for, for the future. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, antibiotic. Yes. A natural antibiotic. Yes, okay. Okay, now um, another question. Hi, would you say the setting up and accessories are also very important in contributing to the tone color of the instrument. 
No, I don't think so. I don't think so. The um, setup as tags, the tail piece, it's not so important. It's like, uh, in my opinion, uh, it goes up to 5%. It's just uh, looking, I talk about uh, high setup, there's no more than a few percentage, very few like one percent two percent okay well i thank you for it's having okay. you <laughs> and we are coming I mean, to the end of this pleasure. interview <laughs> okay congratulations for your for your experience yes yes wow it's it was amazing. it was a it was a pleasure i hope <laughs> that all the uh, all goes well yes yes okay on behalf of jpo we would like to thank you for dedicating your time and energy okay. into this interview, despite the pandemic that is happening right now. So before we end, I would like to give a, a prayer, a short prayer to end tonight's program. So for everyone, please pray in whatever faith you believe in for the COVID-19. Dear Lord, we lift to you our concern for people who are more likely than others to become severely ill from COVID-19 the elderly and people with chronic health conditions. Protect them from harm and be their comfort in this time of uncertainty and for many preventive isolation from loved ones. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. That's all for us today. All stay safe and see you guys on the next show. Goodbye. <laughs>